Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we need to discuss something really important in the world of jailbreaking. I'm creating this one to clear up some misconception and misinformation that's going around recently pertaining to the creation of a brand new jailbreak. Essentially, there was a post on the jailbreak subreddit suggesting that iOS 9.2.1 is significantly harder to jailbreak than iOS 9.2, and that the jailbreak developers will instead target iOS 9.2 instead of the latest public firmware as of recording this video, which again is iOS 9.2. 9.2.1. That's simply not true. We're not going to go over the specifics of the actual post in the jailbreak subreddit. Instead, we're just going to clear some things up. So this report did originate from PP, which definitely doesn't lend to its credibility. We'll get into that in just a second, but essentially the entire foundation behind their argument is that iOS 9.2.1 closes key vulnerabilities that could be exploited and used in the creation of a new jailbreak. And obviously those vulnerabilities exist in 9.2.1's predecessor, iOS 9.2. So we're actually here on the About the Security Content page on Apple.com, and we can scroll through it to see all of the new security changes found inside of iOS 9.2.1, which surprisingly are less than the security changes for its predecessor, iOS 9.2. We're going to detail that momentarily, but first, let's talk about some of the vulnerabilities that could aid in the creation of a jailbreak. So while yes, it is true that some things have been patched that could make it easier for jailbreak teams to release a new utility that definitely won't impede the creation and the release of a new jailbreak. So these three I'm about to mention could go into a new jailbreak, though it's not a make it or break it type situation. And the impact as well as the description are pretty much the same. The impact is identical for the next two. Quote, a local user may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges and a memory corruption issue existed in the parsing of disk images. This issue was addressed through improved memory handling. That one's just 1717. The next one that could help is 1720 here. Again, pretty much the exact same for the description. Quote, a memory corruption issue was addressed through improved memory handling. And then we have 1721, which is just the exact next one that was also discovered by the same team. And then the last few here are concerning the WebKit security improvements. Now, keep in mind, we have absolutely no clue whether Taiji intended to use these to create a brand new jailbreak or not. But chances are good they didn't plan on using them. And here's why. Let's go ahead and switch on over here. iOS 9.2.1 was in developer beta testing for a while. So if the firmware had closed any of the vulnerabilities they were going to exploit, then they probably would have pulled a Pangu. And what I mean by that essentially is the last jailbreak by the Pangu team was released for iOS 9.0.2. It was rushed because iOS 9.1 did close the key kernel vulnerability that the group was using in their jailbreak. And they wanted to make sure that they could still utilize it and that they could still release their jailbreak without having to fully replace that exploit. So they released it early for iOS 9.0.2. And if that were the case here, we already would have seen a jailbreak from Taiji for iOS 9.2 before iOS 9.2.1 was issued to the public because remember it was in beta form for quite a while because jailbreak developers like to release utilities for the latest public firmware, which of course even Pangu was still able to do in spite of the fact that 9.1 closed their jailbreak. While we could end it there, that's not where we're going to. So for iOS 9.1 here, we're on the corresponding page, again, the security content for 9.1. You can see we have significantly more changes here and Apple closed two of the bugs that Pangu actually used in their jailbreak in iOS 9.1. And we can confirm that simply by searching for the term Pangu on the page, and you can see that these two exploits were addressed in iOS 9.1. However, what's interesting is that while 9.1 closed the jailbreak, 9.2 has even more fixes. Another search for Pangu will reveal that three residual exploits from the iOS 9.0.2 jailbreak were addressed and closed in iOS 9.2. So as you can see here, we do have three matching results for Pangu just inside of these security fixes here. And of course, we do have even more fixes than in iOS 9.1 or iOS 9.2.1 for 9.2. What's more, a jailbreak on iOS 9.2.1 isn't impossible, as hacker Luca Tedesco has proven. While he isn't going to release a jailbreak himself, and while his jailbreak teaser was essentially a failbreak more or less, it definitely shows that it is possible to jailbreak iOS 9.2.1, and what's more, it's possible at a kernel level, which is the most difficult part. And for the final nail in the coffin, as far as this story is concerned, we have PP's credibility. Remember, this report did originate from 
some PP who is actually just completely speculating. They have absolutely no clue and they have no inside information. Taiji actually hates PP. In fact, when we go to Taiji's website, we're at just at the mobile version here. You can also see it on the desktop iteration. However, it's less pronounced. They state plagiarism, PP, a confrontation, face to face. Remember, PP completely ripped off and reverse engineered their iOS 8.3 jailbreak to function on 8.4 before Taiji had the chance to do so properly. They even state, quote, PP released a so-called untethered iOS 8.4 jailbreak with Taiji's exploits one hour after the release of iOS 8.4 and provides download through PP jailbreak assistant only by modifying Taiji's program interface. So what we can take away from this is that PP has absolutely no inside information. Remember, Taiji hates them and they're not going to give them any sort of details concerning possible release plans. So that means PP was just referencing that about the security content of iOS 9.2.1 page and making a guess. And it wasn't even a very good one at that because by their logic, we should have seen a jailbreak for iOS 9.1 since iOS 9.2 closed even more exploits but that simply wasn't the case, just like it isn't this time around. Remember, it was misinformation that was starting to perpetuate and basically just a hunch. It wasn't necessarily true. I hope this video cleared up the matter for you, and if you have yet to, be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe for even more frequent updates. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.